Good day, Junior Tuckies. I'm Mrs. Brudenkamp, and I'm going to be covering advertisements using ideology in this lesson. Firstly, what is advertising? Advertising is the activity or profession of producing advertisements for commercial products or services. Now, that's the dictionary definition, but it's so much more than that. It influences how we live our lives, what values we have, what trends we follow, and even sometimes what we're thinking. Advertising has become more and more apparent with the rise of the internet. Just think about the, all of those ads that are on YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok. Being able to use your critical thinking skills will aid you in understanding adverts, as well as seeing how advertising companies try to manipulate their consumer. Let's look at the different types of examples of adverts. Firstly, you get print adverts that you'll find in a newspaper or in a magazine. You get mail adverts. You can think of this as spam. Number three is television. Those are the ads that you see in between your uh, programs or series that you're watching. Number four are radio ads. Number five are podcast ads. Number six are social media ads, and seven are display ads, which you can consider the billboards. Let's look at advert one. So this is a typical advert that would be found in a newspaper. There's no color, but there is large font to draw the reader's attention. Let's look at advert two, a classic TV advert. I'm sure you know that that is McDonald's. Here you will be able to see that there's a lot of color and crisper graphics because we're watching it on our TVs. And then the third advert over there is a social media advert. You will see that the color is vivid to draw the reader's attention in and the font is bold for the same reason. Think of anything that really draws in the human eye. This is often paired with videos or new aspects of technology. These adverts want us to click directly onto their sales link to go to those websites. Let's quickly recap the ADA principles. You can use the ADA model whenever you are going to analyze an advert. So A stands for awareness. This is the thing that catches your eye first when you're looking at an advert. What made you stop scrolling when you're on your phone? Then we get interest. Now, this is how the, the marketers are able to maintain our interest. What is the slogan? What is the, the graphics look like and things like that? Then desire. Now, desire is the desire of the marketers, not our desires as the, as the consumer. And then we get action. What action do we need to perform? Are we going to go and purchase the product? Or is the advert simply informing us about something important in the world. Let's look what it means to have ideology in advertising. Remember, ideology is beliefs that someone has. So what is it? It's using ideas that the world has around values, appearance, class, wealth, race, religion, and gender to sell products to a specific target market. Sometimes adverts try to challenge our beliefs about these different topics, but usually this type of marketing and advertising is used against us to try to get us to purchase products. Let's look at examples of ideology and adverts from the past. You will notice that many, if not all of these adverts address weight and gender roles. Let's look at advert one. This advert is to promote weight loss. In the 1950s, it was not desirable to be overweight. This means that overweight people were often seen as lazy because of their size. This is the ideological view that is seen in this advert, using people's ideas about weight against them to buy the product in order to lose weight. Let's look at advert two. The ideological view in this advert is the need to appear perfect. In this case, it's often used with surgery or an apparatus to correct all the undesirable elements of the face. Unfortunately, with the rise of filters on social media and celebrities undergoing surgery, this ideological belief is still present in our society today. Let's look at advert three. 
This is another weight, another weight loss ad, and it's obviously not acceptable to be a bigger person. Once again, marketers leaning in on that insecurity and hoping that people will buy their pill or their syrup, as it seems in advert three. Then number four, this advert deals with the male approach of having to look perfect. Once again, weakening the insecurities of people in order to buy products. Number five, the ideological view in this advert is the fact that women can open the bottle. So even women can open the bottle. She didn't need the help of her husband. This is displaying how condescending a lot of advertising was towards women, especially in the 1950s. It's kind of implying that, wow, this tomato sauce bottle is so easy to open, she doesn't even need her husband's help. So once again, preying on that ideological view that men are better than women. Number six, the ideological view in this advert shows us how women should act. They should not drink because it will make them look like a man. Once again, attacking gender roles. Number seven. This advert is clear in the sense that it kills two birds with one stone. They are advertising their cigarettes and pushing the narrative that women who smoke are thin and rich. It was very, very popular to smoke during this period, time period. So once again, preying on the fact that women should be rich and thin, especially if they smoke those cigarettes. And then our final adverts on the slide, the gender roles are here are being used to sell beer. The ideological view that women belong in the home making dinner is seen. It ultra also patronizes the woman and her ability to cook. Let's analyze an ideological advert from the past. I want you to look at the notes on your left hand side. You will see that the husband's eyes are wandering to her bare leg in the look of disgust. Then the caption used over here, married, as you can see, it is bold and it is in capital letters. And there's a use of rhetorical question. So here, the use of rhetorical question calls all married people to grab their attention, to get them to look at this ad. And then you will see the continuation of the headline, no reason to neglect stockings. So here, the font is large, it is bold, it draws the attention of the viewer. Then you will see the beginning of the adverts, where it says, Husbands admire wives who keep their stockings perfect. Now, I want you to have a look at how language is being used here. They're actually stating opinion as fact, that all husbands around the world admire all wives around the world that have perfect stockings. In reality, this is not the case. And then the final note, the product placement. You will see that for the fact that they're trying to advertise the stockings to us, it is very small in the ad. This is because this advert relies on the ideology to push the marketing, to push the advertising to the consumer, rather than actually advertising the real product. Let's look at some ideological adverts now. In today's era of advertising, advertising agencies have tried to right the wrongs of their past. Although this is admirable, advertising agencies still benefit off of exposing our ideas or exploiting our ideologies. You will see in the following adverts how beauty and gender standards have changed. So let's look at advert one, a Dove advert that pulls through the ideology that we are all beautiful, even though we have flaws. There is no use of hair models to sell the product because the people who are buying the product are not hair models. So kind of feeding into the belief that we are all perfect just the way that we are. But once again, still benefiting off of that idea out of that out of that ideology then the second advert the guardian challenges ideas around gender 
It is showing us how often in the past women and girls were not considered brave. This advert wants to break those norms, which is seen with the little girl kicking the box that says, can't be brave, but once again, benefiting off of these ideas. Let's look at advert three. Another Dove advert, and they're clever in the sense that they use old ideology around age and appearance, contrasting with the new ideas about being happy in your own skin. So the first box over there is wrinkled question mark that's the use of the old ideology or it could have been wonderful question mark so by contrasting or juxtaposing these two ideas against each other helps us as the viewer to understand that we are beautiful just the way that we are then number four always brought out a series of adverts challenging the ideological view or the ideological saying, like a girl. You know, run like a girl, hit like a girl. And this was to try and minimize how great women and girls can be. In this advert, we have a little girl ready to throw the baseball. But once again, remember that they are benefiting off our ideas and our values. And then number five, unfortunately, not all advertising companies have got on board about trying to eliminate gender ideology. In this advert, Mr. Clean is being advertised to a mother as a Mother's Day gift. And I cannot think of anything worse. It's also insinuating that the most important part of the mother's job is cleaning, which is absolutely not true. Let's analyze an ideological advert from today. Let's look at the arrow pointing at strong is beautiful. So you will see that there's bold text. It is to draw the viewer's attention. And the word strong in our times is often associated with woman. So strong is beautiful. And this can also have the connotation of having strong hair. Then you will see that Pantene has a very small area advertising the actual product. Why? Because they're relying on that slogan and they're relying on the model. Now, moving to the model, Selena Gomez. A celebrity model increases the likelihood of customers actually buying the product. So, Pantene is benefiting off of our new ideas that we have about women being strong. Sensationalism in media. So what is sensationalism? It's the presentation of stories in a way that's intended to provoke public interest or excitement at the expense of accuracy. So that is the dictionary definition. Basically, it is advertising fake stories in order for people to read them, to buy the newspapers. So, a magazine that follows celebrities around and often exaggerates or even makes up stories about those celebrities to sell papers. You will see that I've given three examples over here. So, the first one is a newspaper article using persuasive language to spread fear around COVID-19. You cannot see, but when I did look at this image, it was in March 2020. So at that point in time, everyone in the world was afraid. And by this newspaper making the headline, you will get the virus, with will underlined, is sensationalism. At that point in time, little was known about the coronavirus. And this was to fear, uh, to create fear and for you to buy that newspaper. Then, the Daily Sun, which is uh, advert two and three, uh, is a very good example of a South African sensational newspaper. They often make up ridiculous headlines in order to sell their newspapers. Just like number two, SMS from the devil, or number three, marry my chicken. Let's have a look at source. So there are two different types of sources. Firstly, you get your direct source. So this is a person who's delivering a message or advertising a product. You can see that I used the example of Rihanna being included in a Nivea ad. She is the face of the campaign. She is delivering the message. She is selling the product. And then we get an indirect source, 
which does not deliver a message but still obviously promotes the product. I decided to use the same product, Nivea, and to show you an indirect source, where it's plain and simple, just advertising the Nivea men's range. The intention of advertisers. Most of the time, the intention of advertisers is for us to buy the product, often with little to no care of how the product is marketed to us. They will use our weaknesses, our loves, and our hates against us to market a product. However, there are some advertising companies that want to create awareness about global issues. If you have a look at the McDonald's advert, you will see it is advertising McDonald's firstly, and obviously that now you can go into their stores and be able to charge all your devices. This has no care of how it is marketed to us. It could be marketed to someone who is in their 40s or to a child as young as 11 or 12 years old. Then you will see the WWF adverts at the bottom over there. It is a mannequin wearing a snow leopard coat. And it says they're limited edition, only 60 left worldwide. So this is using the fashion industry to indicate to us that we cannot continue killing snow leopards because there are only 60 left in the wild. So there are some advertising companies that do want to warn us about global issues. Alright Junior Tuckies, I hope that this lesson helped you understand ideological adverts. Next up is the characteristics of a novel.